Hi everybody, uh, it's Jessica. You might know me as Deep with Future, I guess. It's kind of weird to say out loud. Um, I asked you guys for questions, and a lot of you asked me questions, especially there at the very end. Uh, so I have a lot. Bear with me. I thought I was going to have to make two different videos <laughs> because I thought my phone said I had five minutes left, which is really strange. Um, and that's because really I had five hours. So I'm going to be able to just make the one video, and that's cool. So um, this is like my third try because once I was like, <laughs> in the camera, nobody wants to see that. And once I was like, <laughs> and nobody wants to see that either. So this is going to be the one. This is it. And I hope you're ready because I'm going to answer the F out of these questions. All right. So the first question is from Cavi Armpits. And they asked what my favorite book was. And thank you for that question. And my favorite book, um, after much deliberation, is Ishmael by Daniel Quinn. Uh, I think that it's a really good book because even though it's fiction, there's a lot of fact in it. Um, and it really just changed my basic understanding of how civilization arose and how it came to be. Like before, I never really thought about it. Like I always just thought about, and I read this uh, like four or five years ago. Yeah, wow, four or five years ago. Um, but I always just thought of like what I was taught in history, but they don't really teach you much um, before a certain point. Imagine that. So I kind of, it just blew my mind to think about like the way things were before, the way they are now, and the way they've come to be. And that, just thinking of that and learning the way that people used to survive, it was just a beautiful, it's a beautiful book, and it really changed everything about the way I considered the world. So I'll definitely check that out. Maybe I'll link to it down there. That was, oh my God. <laughs> and then you also asked what my favorite thing about Quake was. And I would have to say how sweet and affectionate and appreciative he is. Um, he literally hugs me. He is just a great cuddler. He's very sweet. It's very obvious that he appreciates me bringing him here and loving him and taking care of him. And my favorite thing about him is just him being around him and him loving me and me loving him and... He's fun. He's a good dog. I'm glad that I have him. Uh, he's put me in a better mood a lot. So that's cool. Uh, thank you for those questions. The next question is from X, Satan's Little Helper X. That is my friend George. Welcome, George, and thank you for the question. Um, he asked, when you became vegan, was it hard for me to accommodate to my new lifestyle? I would have to say no, because I was vegetarian for like three or four years before. Um... So it wasn't really that difficult. I was already used to checking labels. I was already used to taking out things for my diet and adding different things in. So it wasn't really a big deal. It was just something to do. I mean, any parts that were challenging were a pleasant challenge. They were fun. They were interesting. It, I mean, any challenge in veganism and changing your diet is just eating new food. That's the challenge, eating new food. And that's not a challenge for me. That's a fucking reward. So, no, it was it was fun. I got to try foods that I never tried before. And they all fully took the place of the ones that I got rid of. I was thinking today how much I used to love ranch dressing. Like, I was obsessed with it. Like, I would put everything in ranch. And my salads were dressed in ranch. And before I went vegan, I was like, I'm really going to miss ranch dressing. And now if I even smell it, I'm like, <coughs> like, it just smells rancid. I don't even know. Like, uh. But anyway, for me personally, it was very easy uh, and fun. And I really enjoyed it. So thank you for the question. Talk to you later. Um, the next question is from Closer Than Heaven. Hello. Thank you for the question. Um, it was, how do you feel about the current political climate in the country? Mm, I feel like it's, first of all, very childish. Um, childish and offensive. I feel like it's a lot of he said, she said. And a lot of the he said, she said is purposefully offensive. It's purposefully racist or homophobic or like anti-poor, whatever that even means. Um, and I feel like it's purposefully offensive because... Politicians feel like they can say those things. They can pretend that they're accidents. They can say those things and they can get those fringe voters who really actually believe that way. But then they can apologize and explain it away and still keep the majority of the people who are going to vote for them anyway. So it's kind of like a win-win situation. They get more publicity. Um, they get crazy. or I'm, I'm sorry. They get obnoxious voters that no one... Ugh, they just get terrible. It's just bad. So that's awful. Um, I think it's lies a lot of it. I think uh, it's distraction. I think it's <sighs> focused on the wrong issues. It's just a lot of nonsense. The, the political climate is nonsense. Focusing on 
Herman Cain as a serial, like, I don't, I just don't understand what the things that we talk about when there are so many things going on that we ignore, like climate change. I think there were like, I really read that there were like five stories on primetime news last year about climate change. But there's like a thousand stories about like little squirrels or ducks or like anything stupid like that. It's just, I don't know. I feel like, and it's also super racist against Obama. Like, I don't care about Obama. I think he's probably whatever is a president. Like, he does really awful things, but he also does good things, just like every other shitty president, every other president, period. Um, Presidents, by nature, do good things to, to please the public, and then they do awful things behind closed doors. And that's not, like, really up for debate, I don't think. So ultimately, I don't like Obama, but I feel like a lot of people dislike him because he's black, but they want to say other reasons. So they say things um, that he's doing that white presidents have done years and years and years in a row, and nobody said these things about them, or at least not as loudly. Uh, But it's not because he's black. It's not because he's black. And then they just say racist stuff. I don't know. The political climate is awful. It's a distraction. It's a lie. It's just fake. It's all fake. It's a show to keep you distracted from the real issues and the real problems they put on a play for us every day, and it's disgusting. That's probably a really jumbled answer, but whatever. So thank you for that question, making me ramble. Uh, Borderline89 asked what it was like for me growing up. Growing up was frustrating for me. Uh, My parents had me when they were kind of young, and they were still growing up, we'll say. So I had to watch my parents grow up, and that kind of made my childhood a little bit difficult. Also, oh my god, was I doing it again? (sighs) Listen to me talk. Sorry. Um, Also, I didn't really have any friends when I was a kid. I was a weirdo. Um, I was biracial. People made fun of me for that. I had a big afro. I was kind of fat. And you know how kids treat people who are different? So nobody liked me, but it's okay. It's awesome, actually, because now everybody fucking likes me. And if they don't, I really don't care. And obviously not everyone likes me, but people like me because I didn't have any friends when I was growing up. People like me because I will tell them the truth. People like me because I'm not scared to be freaking weird. Like, I'm honest and I'm weird and I'll do something creepy and I don't really care if it's creepy because I spent years being a creep. And eventually when people think you're a super creep, you just have to be like, whatever, like, say I'm a creep. Go for it. Say I'm an Oreo cookie with, like, a fuzzy, I don't know, say I'm a Chia Pet. Say whatever the fuck you want. Say, my pants are flooding because they are. I don't care. And say, make fun of me for carrying all my Animorphs books, 1 through 45, here to class. What if I need to reference one? What about that? You can make fun of me, but guess what? If I need to know why Jake can't turn into this certain animal anymore, I'm going to go back to book 25 and I'm going to figure it out. And you're going to be sitting there like, what is that weirdo doing? But it doesn't matter because later, I'll be awesome. So, whatever. Anyway, (laughs) growing up was fabulous. Growing up was hard, but being grown up is better. So yeah, thanks for the question. Um, I really wrote this very poorly. Luis, Luis Tries Living asked me a question. Who's my favorite superhero or villain? Um, I don't know if these are, if these are superheroes or villains. I really have no clue. Um, but when I was a kid, my first memories of watching, like, heroes were X-Men. Probably, I don't even know, I was probably five. So that would have been whatever version was out in, like, 1992, X-Men. And I loved Rogue. She was my absolute favorite. I wanted to be her. I walked around acting like Rogue, and I thought it was awesome that no one could touch her. Like, she was just it. She was so cool. Her hair was cool. She was awesome. But then I started watching closer, and I guess becoming more self-aware. And I was like, man... I look like Storm. I'm going to be Storm. So then Storm was my favorite. But then my dad and I started watching Batman, like Gotham City, I guess. I don't even know what version it was. Around the same, no, a little bit later, probably when I was like 10 or something. And Batman was it. Batman was cool. My favorite villain from Batman was Harlequin. She was just funny. And I liked how, I don't know, she was just funny and cool. She was cute. So thanks for that question. Rab Jeezy said, do you have a rap name for yourself? Um, when I was in high school, I called myself Jay Sizzle sometimes. Uh, and sometimes now I just call myself Sizzle. That's my rap name. And lately my friend has been calling me Jay Wow and trying to get me to rap. I don't know, but I would, and he, oh, he also asked if I could spit a dope sucker freestyle. And I can't do that. 
I can't spit a dope to suck a freestyle. My friend who calls me Jay while tries to get me to rap and it's just not gonna happen, folks. Uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. Uh, but thanks for the question. You can call me by my rap name if you want. Please don't though. Um, the next question is from Sylvester08, and I wrote all these questions down, and I, yours was kind of long, um, so I just, I'm going to paraphrase it, but uh, I hope this advice is good for you. It, this is an advice question. So Sylvester08 moved across country, and they have a friend um, who lives back in their old town who is who's turned into a moocher, and they that person scammed their mother out of money, like scammed Sylvester's money, mom, out of money while they were while she's gone. That's fucked up. Like, you leave and you're going to take money from my mom? Really? Uh, but she doesn't like confrontation, but she wants to cut him out of her life and she needs advice. So feel free to, like, chime in on this down in the replies or reblog it or something. Um, if you don't like confrontation, I really think that cutting someone out of your life doesn't necessarily have to be a confrontational thing. Like, if you can be calm... Mm, I guess people don't just view confrontation as, like, loud and, like, raw. Because to me, confrontation is, like, when shit goes bad, you know? But sometimes people, like, I guess you view confrontation as saying, like, I don't want you in my life anymore. Um, so if you're scared of doing that, I mean, you're across the country. You could just cut them out of your life, period. Don't talk to them. Tell your mom not to talk to them. Tell your family not to talk to them. Uh, cut them out. It doesn't have, there doesn't have to be a confrontation. If the end result is having him out of your life, you could do that uh, really easily. But uh, if you want to talk to him... If you're scared of face-to-face -face confrontation, I don't think there's anything wrong with calling them. Uh, and, I, and if you want to, there, it doesn't have to be a confrontation to say, listen, here are the reasons why you can't be my friend anymore. You scammed my mother out of money. You just use me as a friend, and I don't think that's okay. Uh, that's what I would do. And then if they got an attitude, I would pop off. But uh, you don't like confrontation, so I don't know. Maybe just... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Maybe... <coughs> Maybe just stop talking to him. Man, this is 12 minutes already. Who is going to watch this? Like, nobody. Um, Closer Than Heaven. Ooh, is it over already? Oh, only 12 minutes, right? That's not a big deal. There's two more questions. Closer Than Heaven, again. Hi, thank you. Ask me, what's my favorite movie and why? Um, sometimes I get a little anxious about picking favorites because I like certain movies and books because they represent certain parts of me and certain parts of my character. Um, or, like, express certain ways I feel about things. So to pick a favorite movie or a favorite book, it's, like, making me pick a certain part of myself that I like the most or that's the most important to me. And so if the movie that I really enjoy the most just naturally happens to be, like, kind of vapid, <laughs> I feel guilty. Not saying that this movie is vapid, but anyway, anxiety aside, my favorite movie is the movie Closer with Natalie Portman and Julia Roberts and Clive Owens and, um, uh, Jude Law. Uh, I don't know why I like it. I guess because I've never really had a relationship. I've never had a boyfriend. I've never been <sighs> exclusive with someone. And that whole movie is kind of about how that can go wrong. And also how it can feel really right and go really right. So it's just an intriguing movie to me. Um, and I think it's really interesting that there's only four characters in the movie. Like, you don't really talk to anyone else. You don't hear anyone else talking. I think there's one bartender that you can hear say, like, someone's bill. But there's really no secondary characters. It's just these four people. And I feel like in the very small glimpses I've had of, like, romance or love, not love, romance or, like, infatuation, um, it does feel so, okay, a little bit like you're the only people in the whole world. Like, yeah, you hear people in the background. But at least when that person's around, it's just you two. And I feel like that's what that movie was getting at and just the one-liners in that movie and the I just feel like it's kind of a raw honest movie I really like it <sighs> so thank you for that other question and the last question is from anonymous oh anonymous you cheeky monkey um the anonymous says that I seem to have a good amount of confidence what do I advise for people who aren't that confident uh I wouldn't I have a lot more confidence than I used to. Um, I have spent a lot of time improving myself on the inside and changing myself to feel better on the outside. So I have a lot more confidence. Um, but if it's something, if you're if you're not confident like about your body, um, like I was really, I was bigger. I weighed like 260 pounds or something. 
and I wasn't very confident. And then I, I thought if I lost weight, I would just be confident right away. But I lost a lot of weight, like 60 or 70 pounds, and I still wasn't confident. I still felt really bad about my body, and that's when I realized it really isn't about how you feel on the outside. I had to work on myself from the inside. And that sounds really cheesy, but it's not like... It's not. It's just about changing your patterns of your thoughts because I would look at myself and think, look what's wrong here and what's wrong here and what's wrong here and nobody would like that and nobody would like this and nobody would like this. And I realized, like, well, well what if one day I look in the mirror and I say, this is what I do like and this is what I do like and this is what someone else might like and someone else might like this and even if this doesn't look beautiful to me, maybe it looks beautiful to someone else and it would look beautiful to someone who loved me. So it, it re I just really had to, like, it's like training a puppy. Every time your puppy grabs something off the ground, you tell him no, and you take it back. So every time my brain went into a negative thought or a negative area, I just said no, and I took it back. And eventually, I started to feel good. Also, I listened to a lot of songs that were, like, boisterous. Like, a lot of, I tried to find rap songs that didn't marginalize me. It's difficult and doesn't always work, but... Uh, just swagger songs, you know, like, people make fun of swagger, but for me, it's a confidence builder, like, I had really low self-esteem, I really thought I was nasty and awful and disgusting, and nobody needs to feel like that, so if swagger makes me feel better, I'm gonna swag, that's what I have to do, I have to swag, so, uh, like, Willow Smith, come on, you can't be mad, hop about the bed, turn your swag on, pay no attention to the haters, you just whip them off, like, it doesn't matter if so-and-so thinks I look fat, or so-and-so thinks my hair looks nasty in this weird little puffball. I don't care, because I hopped up out of that motherfucking bed, and I turned my swag, and I don't pay attention to the haters. I whip them off. And if I'm hating on myself, I whip myself off, too, because there's no reason ever, ever to hate on yourself. So be confident. That's all it is. You just be confident. You take the steps to be confident. Also, if you're, like... Confident about your size if you think you're bigger or if you if you think like your nose is too big or whatever Change your role models like something I did when I was 260 pounds is I started following blogs that made women who were bigger Beautiful they put them in a light saying like in that light saying these people are beautiful um, If all you see or if, if you watch normal TV and if you read normal magazines and go to stupid normal websites Yeah, you're gonna feel bad about your body because that's all, all you're seeing is the opposite, being promoted as attractive. So if you follow, like, six or seven blogs and always big women are coming up in your dash looking fine as hell, you're going to be like, damn, I could rock that. I could totally rock that. And you're going to start to feel differently about yourself and other people. That was something else that made me feel good. Every time I, I used to I used to take out my feelings, about my bad feelings about myself on other people, I guess. So I would look at someone and be like, oh, this, this is nasty, that's nasty, this is nasty. And when I told myself to stop doing that, I changed the way I looked at myself too. Because if you're in that, be, that pattern of being negative when you look at someone, of course when you look at yourself, you're going to be negative too. Like if you look at that person and you say, ew, look at their hair, why are their teeth so jacked up, whatever, 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 you look in the mirror, you're going to do the same thing to yourself. So once I, and I didn't even do that to stop being that way to myself. I, I did it to stop being such a douchebag to other people. Like why am I judging other people? I was being a D-bag, so I didn't do that anymore and it changed the way I treated myself. So really it has to be like a conscious effort. Like you have to try, you can't just change the way you look or change the way you act or whatever. You have to like go for it. You have to make an effort to be a different person, to be a better person, to be a more confident, comfortable person. You have to change what's coming in and what's staying in, and what's being created inside of you. Like, you can do it. You just have to really try. Um, so, yeah. Thank you for all those questions. I hope this wasn't boring. It's 20 minutes. Uh, I'm, I, I'm sure not all of you are going to watch it all the way through, but to those of you who did, thank you. And uh, see you on the flip side.